When should my child go to sleep without me? Uh, bedtime can be one of the hardest things because it is in the camp of those things that you cannot control within your child's body. And honestly, they can't either. If you've ever had a night where you lay down and you have a really hard time going to sleep, most likely that's frustrating to you because it's, it's not that you're choosing to stay awake. Uh, but it can definitely feel like that when you're, you're a parent and you feel like your child just flips around constantly, is sitting up, um, just feels like they're a little ta Tasmanian devil in the bed. Then a lot of times we feel as parents that they are choosing to not go to sleep and it is incredibly frustrating. Uh, but what's important to remember about sleep is that it is one of the most intense separations uh, for your child, for, for all of us during the day. You are, your body is, is essentially shutting down from, from the awareness of this immediate environment and going into subconscious, um, sometimes dreams that are really vivid and sometimes those dreams are really scary. Um, you can't control what dreams come. Subconscious kind of has a mind, <laughs> a mind of its own. Um, so you, it, it can be a scary experience to be able to let yourself relax and go into sleep, especially if sleep and dark and nighttime has held horrible and painful things in the past. So bedtime can be a really, really tough transition for a lot of our kids, especially those who have experienced a lot of um, early trauma. When you're, being, when you're mindful of that, then, then you can give yourself and give your child a bit more space and a little more compassion in the process of being able to, to uh, relax and calm to go to sleep. You also can give yourself a little bit more uh, permission to be close to your child longer, to help them go into to that tr transition of sleep. Um, laying with your child is not going to harm them, even if it feels like you are having to do that for a long amount of time and they're old, um, older. It's, it's not harmful because what, what you're doing when you're laying next to your child um, your, your body and the calmness that you are trying to keep yourself in can actually help their body move to that rhythm as well. Like your heart rate, if you're able to stay calm and your heart rate is lower and your child is laying next to you, then, then they can um, sometimes hear that heartbeat um, or they can feel your uh, breathing slower. Breathing slower helps the oxygen uh, fill in the body and, and, and for you to be able to calm down much faster and help the body relax. Also, if you are in a situation uh, maybe with foster care where you're not able to have your child next to you in the bed, then having a pallet on the floor um, provides a, a similar experience where they're in the same room, maybe a pallet on the floor in your room. So when they're scared or they're having a hard time sleeping, they can come into your room and, and lay on the floor and maybe hold your hand at the side of the bed. Um, or you can have music playing or you can sing or, or tell a story to them, something to be able to let them know that you're there. Um, and similarly, you could have a pallet on their floor where you go in, maybe you pull in a small mattress or a big pillow or something and, and you hang out on their floor while they're in their bed um, and, and just being in the, pr in the presence of a, an adult can really help calm fears. When you are trying to transition and help your child, when, if a child's been in your home for a long amount of time and you feel like it's really gonna help them to, to transition more and more to going to sleep on their own, one of the best ways to do that, being mindful of attachment, is helping them create sleep associations just similar to rituals. Whenever, when we do something over and over again, then it helps your body have this natural understanding of what's coming next. So it's the same thing with sleep associations. You can take a blanket, a stuffed animal, a pillow, something that would be comfortable and good for them to sleep with. Um, even a fan in the room, so the sound, the white noise sound, or lullabies playing, anything that can um, be a sensory input for them to be able to start to associate when this happens, my body goes to sleep. 
And so um, the more that you're able to slowly transition yourself being the, the sleep association to something else that they can hold on to or have with them in the room, the, um, the better off they're gonna be long-term. Because what happens is in the natural sleep cycle, we all wake up multiple times throughout the night. A lot of times we wake up and don't really come to full awake, so we don't uh, record that we've woken up so many times, but it's a natural sleep cycle. So if your child is hitting those sleep cycles and wakes up, if you are that sleep association, then they're gonna, they're gonna ask for you to be there to go back to sleep, which is not, there's, there's, there's not a problem in that other than the fact that um, over time you can start changing those associations to something that can already be with them in their room at all times, like a stuffed animal or a blanket. So overall, understand sleep is such a hard, is really a hard transition for our kids. Have as much compassion as you can for that process and have as much patience as you can for transitioning it into something that can be a healthy sleep association for them in the future.